Oops, hey, we're changing now. It's time for the self-health activist. And speaking for the self-health act. Anyway, here is Mary without further ado. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ron. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mary Burris, and this is Self Care Activist. And today on the show, I have S. Ross Brown. He is an, a fine artist and an art therapist, and he will be chatting with us about um, how art therapy can be an act of self-care. So um, thank you so much for tuning in here at WRWK LP 93.9 FM, The Work, serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, Hanover, Powhatan, Midlothian, and the universe via the magic of technology. So um, good afternoon, Ross. Good afternoon, Ross. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the self care activist today. Um, so I guess we should start with uh, learning a little bit about you and your your work. So I understand that um, you're a VCU arts grad. Is that correct? I wouldn't say grad, but I went to VCU arts. <laughs> you attended the, the way that my friend Eric said, I attended VCU. I attended VCU. Excellent. So. Um, and you were an art therapist at MCB, is that correct? Right. Well, I practice art therapy mm -hmm. um, uh, for five years at MCB. I'm not like an art therapist, but I practice uh, art therapy in different modalities like um, uh, pediatric hematology, oncology, uh, infectious diseases, uh, inpatient psychiatry, and... Um, uh, elder care and um, brain injury rehabilitation. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because like <laughs> I'm hearing feedback and we're a little tight in the studio today and we the the mics were in this strange configuration. Every time Ron backs up his chair, he's moving my mic. And so it's just kind of funny. We're having a little comedy of errors over here. That's all right. My, my official title was a uh, um, art specialist. So I handled charting and uh, practicing of therapeutic art, but I also did a lot of the curating of fine art and and um, other art related things. Oh, that is really cool. So, did you have something to say, Ron? I'm trying to stay a fist away from the mic. Got it. <laughs> That's important information. Thank you so much. Um, so, well, I guess the the first thing that um, the first thing I want to know is like what is art therapy? I mean, I kind of know what art therapy is, but for our listeners, a little bit of a definition of what art therapy is, or at least your interpretation. All right. Well, what I did as practicing therapeutic art was use art as a means to uh, circumvent negative emotional trauma and to have a channel for expressing um, uh, other emotional aspects using art as the modality. For instance, if a child was very anxious in the um, uh, oncology clinic, uh, I use art uh, to get them to express that fear and to make them feel comfortable and came up with different um, programs to do that. For instance, I used a monster making workshop where we would name certain things that they were afraid of and give an image to it. And we would build this monster that would always end up looking silly and making them laugh at the things that they were initially afraid of. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for say, for instance, if I was in, um, brain injury rehabilitation and working with someone who had a stroke maybe on the left hemisphere of their brain, I would use um, uh, practices that were very simple like using a, uh, a circle and having them draw inside that circle with their opposite hand in order to reconnect the synapses that were damaged during trauma. Wow, that's absolutely fascinating. So. I'm really curious in particular, you were talking about building monsters, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, something that um, you said you were dealing with uh, children that were in the hospital or facing some terrifying situations. And I, I personally am terrified every time mm -hmm. I walk into a hospital, I, it's like, 
if someone wanted to invent a hell for me, that's where they would put me. But um, so when you were saying you were building these monsters, like uh, you were working with a group of kids or kids individually? Um, for uh, pediatric oncology, it was the, it was individually, it was one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. But for things like um, Living Well, it's an organization for the parents, the kids, uh, the family of people with cancer. That was more of a group activity mm -hmm. or say the brain tumor um, uh, support group where I would sometimes do something using mandalas or something mm -hmm. uh, in order to get people to compartmentalize all the wild um, uh, aspects of the emotional upheaval when it comes to dealing with cancer either yourself or a family member. Wow. So you were working with a lot of different people who were involved in the hospital yes. setting. So, but, but do I understand correctly, this is primarily patients or people who were there uh, supporting the patient through a particular illness or yeah, for, condition? For one-on-one, -on -one, it was generally with patients. And I started this working with kids, uh, I think it was the United Way during the first Gulf War, uh, working with kids, helping them to cope with their parents not being there for Christmas. So I had them express uh, their love for their parents, focus on the love, you know, making cards and other gifts to send overseas. But in the hospital is generally one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes I would just bring art supplies to someone who was going through a difficult labor and was bored. <laughs> and oh, that would have been so much fun when I was giving birth to have somebody come in with art supplies would have been just the best thing ever. <laughs> I can only imagine the, the things I would have been drawing. Um, that's really, that's really awesome. Um, so when you, um, so Art therapy, well, working with art therapy, like how did you get involved in that in particular? Um, like I was saying, the first time I was during the first Gulf War when I really can't remember how I got involved with the United Way, but I've always worked with uh, at-risk youth and things like that. And I think it came out of that work that mm -hmm. someone um, uh, approached me and asked if I would do some uh, and that was very early in uh, what is now known as art therapy, but uh, to use art to help uh, bring down the stress levels of these children who, whose parents, for the first time in their lives, weren't going to be around during a uh, major holiday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it worked? As far as I understand. I mean, there was a lot of uh, smiling faces. Uh, uh, it doesn't... Uh, take a tremendous effort to uh, steer the um, attention of children, but to keep them in that mindset, you know, you have to give them the tools to keep doing it themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so art as a medium for emotional expression exactly. in, in this case, and, and this is the way that you're framing art therapy mm -hmm. or therapeutic art, mm -hmm. which, which, which moniker do you prefer? Well, I practice therapeutic art, but it is art therapy. Okay, awesome. So um, just one second here. I mean, we're going to take a little station break. Uh, so we're on WRWK LP 93F, 93.9 FM, The Work. Um, we're serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, Hanover, Powhatan, Midlothian, and the whole universe really through the magic of technology. Um, I'm Mary Burst. This is Self-Care Activist and today I am interviewing S. Ross Brown who is a local artist of some renown I would say. Um, and I just want to say that support for now I'm gonna I'm gonna flip some pages here. That's so professional. Haha -ha, support for WRWK comes from the Thrifty Quaker. Um, 
Located in the Midlothian Station Shopping Center at the corner of Midlothian Turnpike and Coalfield Road, the Thrifty Quaker sells donated items to support the work of 12 varying, mostly local, charities each year. This month's charities are Smitty's Cat Rescue Shelter and Operation Catnip. Together, they are helping homeless cats get neutered and find forever homes. Information at thriftyquaker.com. And um, this is a little known fact about Ross. He has a cat named Blue. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> An expensive cat named Blue, apparently. Yeah, after getting a bag of plastic, he became expensive. <laughs> <laughs> He's now a very valuable and rare cat. All right. So um, we were talking about um, therapeutic art as a means for expressing um, emotions uh, primarily in the case of your your work in the hospital or with um, the United Way, uh, dealing with some sort of, of difficulty, some kind of a, a fear or trauma, mm -hmm. mild trauma. I'm, or I'm, I guess you've worked with people who've had severe trauma I've, too. I've worked with people with severe trauma, uh, severe emotional trauma, um, severe um, trauma as it pertains to their loved ones. So. Uh, all, all aspects. Wow. So, um, in your opinion, I mean, do you see like how how is it? Well, okay, wait. I want to go back to the monsters because like I'm so intrigued by this. Like when you said you were building monsters, what materials, what medium were you using artistically to do to do that? All you need is a. Uh, some crayons or markers or pencil and paper. And we would uh, develop the body parts of this monster. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, what is it that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of needles? All right, what, how would we represent that on this monster? And, uh, and so it would say, how many teeth does he have? And we would add it up, okay, he's got 100 teeth or he has three teeth. And all right, let's put that to the side. All right, what else do we, you know, how many eyes does this monster have? And what color is he, what kind of, what, you know, what, are you, what would represent the fear that you have of, of doctors even, or even fear of the unknown? Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's give this something visceral that you can, if you can see it, most of the time, if the fear of the dark is the fear of the unknown, what's in the dark. And so if you can uh, see it and give it a form, it takes some of that power away. And so by the time we were finished, you'd have this monster with tentacles and three arms and you know, four horns representing something personal for that child, mm -hmm. you know, purple with scales and, you know, invariably it would be very silly looking and nothing to really be afraid of. And by the time they were finished, chemo was over. Oh, wow. Oh, so you would be working with kids who were in the midst of their chemotherapy. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So um, not only using this therapeutic art technique as a, a means for emotional expression, um, minimizing fear of the whole situation in general, but also as a way of distraction. Right, right. Wow, that is fantastic. Um, all right, so I have some questions here. Um, and here's the main one. How is therapeutic art, how could that be translated into an act of self-care? So the point of, of this show that, mm -hmm. that, this, that I've created is, or, and, and, and aptly assisted by Ron, <laughs> who is amazing and I couldn't do anything without him, um, is behind it is the concept that um, we have to take care of ourselves in order to be of service to other people. Indeed. And this is based on um, the whole airplane. This is the only analogy people ever use. Like you're on an airplane and the, the pressure drops and the masks drop out of the ceiling. And the, you know, they tell you in the little safety thing, every time you get on a plane, put your own mask on first and then assist somebody mm -hmm. because if you can't breathe, you can't help somebody else, right? Exactly. So um, 
The idea behind the show is Swami Sachidananda, who founded Yoga Bill, which is right down the street in mm-hmm. Buckingham County, the largest ashram in the United States of America, just by the way. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, that we uh, yogis, we get up at the crack of dawn and we meditate and we, you know, cl- cleanse our souls and cleanse our lungs and, and uh, chant and practice yoga poses, yoga asana practice, and and prepare ourselves. We do this as in preparation, and we eat really good food, fresh organic food grown in, on the farm there. And the reason is so that we can be in the best possible shape to assist other people. Mm-hmm. So how, so this is how, why this whole thing exists. And so my question again is, how is therapeutic art uh, how can it be used in a in a, a way that we can care for ourselves? Well, first you would have to understand what kinds of things you can do that would facilitate as therapeutic art. And that could be anything from just a coloring book or to do outside plein air painting. But I teach a class in my studio, which involves doing different versions and simpler and complex versions of a mandala. And, and as our listeners should know, a mandala is a Asian spiritual device in Sanskrit literally means circle, which gives form uh, to the chaos of the universe and makes it into a more manageable map of spirituality and emotional um, uh, aspects. And so I have a lot of people who come in repeatedly for the same class, but can do many different mandalas and they use, um, they can use positive, negative energy, but we have it mapped out. And so I give them the tools to go home and if they feel like they need to compartmentalize, if they feel like they need to uh, try to put um, their, put it all on paper, put it all on canvas, I give them the tools to go ahead and make that map of their universe, which is for that moment, or it could be forever. We start out on the outside with chaos and all the things we cannot control, and we give that, um, a visceral reality. When you say on the outside, do you mean on the outside of the circle of the, circle. Of the, the yes. mandala itself? Yes. Okay, so the rim of the mandala is the chaos. Right. Um, a lot of people might have been able to go to the, uh, see the Tibetan monks at the VMFA, and that might be the first time they saw a mandala made with sand. Mm. And those are way more complex. And if you go in there and look around, there's other mandalas that show what they interpreted as the chaos of the universe and of their universe back in say the 1400s and you would have body parts and a lot of things going on that were like you know this is war and this is famine and tragedy and this is put out here on the circle of things that we can't control sometimes and then as you go in and through different portals and they had four portals um, and as you went in for our mandalas in my class, we have the chaos on the outside, and then we have four aspects of things that we detest, that we hate, that we despise. Mm-hmm. That negative energy exists. We understand love so completely because we also understand hate. We understand, you know, being sated with food because we understand hunger. And so these things. It could be something that you always hate or just now or forever. And we correspond to color. We do symbolism that corresponds so you don't have to write a dissertation or paint a whole uh, panoply of a scene in order to express what you're trying to say. And we do four of them. And then we go into the next of things that we care about, that we like. You know, it's not the the end all be all of things that we're fond of, but we give them more room. Mm -hmm. And we have those uh, inside of a square space. 
And then inside another circle, we have four things that we love, that we cherish, that we need in our life now or forever. And as you put your emotional energy from the chaos of the things you can't control and then into the things that you hate, which is basically something that you can control, to the things you like, you know, your emotional aspect is changing from helplessness to, you know, determination, you know, or even um, insolence or whatever, and then to um, a more positive aspect, and then you get to the center, and that one thing in the center, which is often represented in uh, Buddhist spirituality, in their mandala is oftentimes a lotus flower, but for my class, you can put any type of symbol. Mm -hmm. It could be a symbol representing your children or your football team or pizza or, <laughs> or your God or whatever you cherish uh -huh. now is the most important thing in your universe now or forever. Cake would yeah. cake would be at the cake. center of my mandala ice cream for you. Yeah, I've had them on there. You know? So, Ron, I'm going to ask you a favor. Would you hand me a pen, number one, <laughs> and... No, I want the other pen. <laughs> Thank you. And um, it might be helpful is to post on the Facebook uh, the some information about the BMFA Tibetan art. Um, it's a fantastic exhibit. I have seen it. And right at the opening is a, the mandala that was created by the, the Tibetan Buddhist monks that came to visit and uh, made out of sand. They preserved it, which gave me a big laugh, a big giggle when I got there because um, the whole purpose of the sand mandala is that it's temporary. And this is the lesson of the sand mandala that mm -hmm. these monks... Um, spend this in incredible amount of time and this incredible it's it's absolutely fascinating the, the accuracy they blow the sand on these through no, actually, like they did they tap they, it with it straws is, they, right they have a metal tube and I, I worked with them last year at the uh, at the Holocaust Museum and they have a metal tube they filled with the colored sand and they take a, a, a stick or a string the metal tube has ridges on it, and they and just they, they rub against it, and so the vibration, whether it's faster or slower, put takes out one grain or a whole bunch of grains at a time. And it's incredible. And the <laughs> the mandala really they made is beautiful, mm -hmm. but but the but the tradition is they spend all this time and they make the sand mandala, and they spend like three sec. I mean, it's like five minutes when they're done. They stand back. They might. Um, or say say something, and then they wipe it. Wipe it and, and uh, deposit it in a, a local body of natural water. And it's a really good metaphor for the impermanence of the universe and the fragility of of our lives, but also the preciousness. How how you know because the only reason why gold and diamonds are you know expensive is because of the rarity. Just can't oh, walk diamonds out. are not rare. They're not rare. It's, we uh, just put a, a value to them. That. That's but right. <laughs> you, but you can't go to your uh, uh, your neighbor's gravel driveway and grab a handful of diamonds. That's what I'm well, <laughs> maybe not. All right, I'm going to open this can of soda. Everyone ready? There you go. That was a nice sound effect. So, um, yeah, so the idea is also that, you know, these the, your labor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your labor is as impermanent as you know your your gift mm -hmm. and so i mean you know it's a whole yin and yang thing but i mean really it's swiped immediately right. so when i saw the one perfectly preserved under glass at the virginia museum i burst out laughing and well i don't know are they going to get rid of it at some point are they going to let them finish the cycle or i this, have like, no idea it would be oh yeah. they could just dump it in next to the chihuly glass uh reeds there at the museum they might have to because moving it is going to shift it it's not like they put it on on glue no 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 so i mean it'll be really actually here's an interesting question for anyone who knows anything about what they're going to do with the mandala that was created by the monks for the tibetan exhibit 
for the VMFA. I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear from you, whether it's on Facebook or whether you call in today at 804-464-1089. And by the way, speaking of calling in, we are taking calls. So if you have questions for Ross if, about himself or art therapy or his other works, which are really awesome, or uh, for me or about self-care or for Ron, for that matter, <laughs> about his his uh, affinity for um, nuts and chocolate and ice cream. Uh, yes, and fundraising. And fundraising, yes. And that's another reason you can call in 804-464-1089. It, it's $40 a day to keep this station going. That's right. You can donate at, face, at Facebook or at our website. The or you could just send me a check directly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But you could call in right now, and we could take your credit card number. Or, um, well, we don't, well, yeah, we can. I can Barry process says it. Can. Barry says it can. <laughs> but I know you can go to our website, and PayPal will do that for you, too. Oh, that's extra awesome. So the website is theworkfm.org. Exactly. That's T-H-E-W-O-R-K-F-M dot org so we'd love to hear from you um really you know the station does a lot of good works here in the community and is a community oriented station so um it would be great to get a donation so thanks for listening to all of that i'm here with ross s ross brown i'm mary burris this is self-care activist i'm also here with ron skinner my producer and um we are discussing therapeutic art and its value as an activity of self-care yay 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 so um all right next question <laughs> or do you feel like you answered that one we went off on a tangent so, um fully but that's all right i am i am known for my tangents mm. <laughs> That was a good one, though. Um, so uh, my next question is, what is your personal journey with therapeutic art? Well, it, it, it's kind of an everyday thing. Um, my personal journey is I get what I, you know, it's reciprocal. I could feel tired and down and 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 have a class coming up and when i'm giving of my energy to the class everything comes full circle and i am you know fed that energy and at the end of, i'm drained but <laughs> it's like uh doing a nice run it's fulfilling and and helping someone find their emotional voice is therapy to me as well and so sometimes I get a chance to work myself. I have like maybe 20 unfinished mandalas from my classes because mm. I have to work with other people and say, oh, let, let me show you how to do this adinkra symbol or something. Uh, and we often use a lot of adinkra symbols, which is, um, um, uh, it was developed by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah uh, in Ghana uh, many years ago, but they've been in effect for centuries, really. And they represent um, spiritualism, philosophy, different aspects made into uh, beautiful but simple um, designs. Like, for interest, instance, there's one called Binakavi. Uh, I believe it's um, one should not bite another. And the design, you know, almost feels like something biting its own tail, uh, like an alligator biting its own tail. And so I think that's a pretty good philosophy to have. You shouldn't go around biting people. But just all the things like besesaka, you know, meaning um, uh, affluence and wealth and wisdom, uh, uses cowrie shells in its design which used to be currency during uh, uh, ancient Arabic times. And so- And during slavery here in the United States. Indeed. And so uh, it's, uh, it's a design that makes it a little bit more abstract sometimes and makes it so whatever they're trying to express has a physical aesthetic beauty, but also 
a connection uh, to Africa, but also has a connection uh, to so many different things because each symbol has paragraphs sometimes that represent what it means. And so we use that as well. We use colors and I tell them, uh, you can use a red octagon to mean something that would mean something different to someone else. And so what I do <clears throat> is often, um, I, I use these images and use these aspects to help myself as far as with, with uh, the therapy. But I think I find my therapy in the complexities of my own artwork. Most people, their jobs, be they air traffic controllers or, you know, work as a brain surgeon can be stressful in different ways and they have to have other ways to cope with that stress. Oftentimes they do something that is counterproductive in their lives, but sometimes they can say, oh, I'm gonna go out fishing or what have you. But for me, my job is an artist and my craft inherently has therapeutic aspects built into what I'm doing. Like if somebody's job was a, a rower, you know, who did crew or something, or was a physical trainer, that physical activity would have therapeutic aspects on them. But not all of us can have be that fortunate. And sometimes our jobs are deleterious to our physical and emotional state. But so for me, that is, I guess, my therapy. And since I paint what I feel and what I want to paint, instead of like some artists paint what they think other people will like, it becomes a little more therapeutic than usual. So let's speak to that a little bit. Um, Ron, I'm gonna ask you a favor. And that is to, uh, do we have a connection of um, Ross's, uh, website on yeah, our it's listed. Yeah. great okay so if if you have a chance um take a look at ross's website which is go ahead and say what it is s ross brown with an e at the end of brown dot com so that's s ross brown dot com thank you it is on our facebook page for the show on right the on, on the comment section for this particular show um he has some amazing portraits of uh, African American, I would say women, but people, I would people. say, because it's men, women, and children. And some that aren't African American. And some that aren't African American. But I didn't see any of this when I was looking through your stuff. But um, absolutely beautiful. So, um, and uh, some of these portraits are, are, I noticed in your studio, are women in. Um, what is that? Fifth, 16th century? Seventeenth. Uh, Elizabethan, some Tudor. Uh, some uh, bit, costumes, yeah, right? Some could be uh, those type of costumes that are are taken out of uh, historical and typical context. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you'll have those aspects because they might that particular painting might be speaking about say uh, the advent of colonialism or speaking about um, a particular person in history that is not represented. And sometimes it's uh, using certain aspects like even armor as a metaphor or even using armor and other aspects as um, a placement in a dystopian or even a, uh, a future type um, a society that some people have they sometimes assume that it's in the past when it's actually in the future you'll see things like contrails in the sky that kind of um, hint to that particular aspect and there's always little hidden symbolisms in there whether it's a dink row or the, my use of skulls or flowers or birds or animals spirits uh, spirit animals and such and so uh, there's always some layer of um, symbolism and so in this series of paintings in particular, like what were you emotionally expressing about yourself? Um, I guess I was emotionally expressing a lot of the um, unanswered questions because most of my people 
don't know our history, like they don't know our language, what tribe we may have come from, what what uh, part of Africa, what what part of Native America, what part of the you know certain aspects of of you know a lot of my uh, white friends can say, oh, my great grandfather is German or was came from you know this part of the uh, Ural Mountains or from Italy, whereas uh, with most Black Americans it stops um, at say great great grandparents if you're lucky. Um, sometimes it can go even further, but we oftentimes don't know if we came from Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, where have you. And that in conjunction with being culturally and um, physically displaced in history presents a cultural post-traumatic stress disorder that has not been uh, dealt with throughout the centuries, you know, that came from the transatlantic slave trade. And oftentimes, as you awaken as a human being and ask that simple question, who am I and where do I come from? You want to figure that out. And so you do your research and come upon things that as an artist, you want to address with, um, with fine art address with drawing with sculptures and and sometimes you might have a, a scene in your head that you just have to see to its zenith um, whereas I have a sketchbook full of paintings that I've you know I've not completed but still talk about uh, the dialogue with myself and others about um, we have a call on that was flashing it was there it is flashing now <laughs> sorry to interrupt you ross okay. i was all excited and saw the phone blinking andrea is with us on the phone oh, give me just a moment to get her set up okay all right well this is self-care activist i'm mary burris i'm here with s ross brown and we have andrea on the line we'll be speaking with in just a moment all right okay go ahead Andrea. hi i just want to make a statement about the self-care i've taken several of mr brown's uh art classes yeah great tell us more about that hello yes Yes, you ready? Go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, and um, so I teach middle school, eighth grade. It's extremely stressful. And when I started to take his classes, you know, I thought that the time period, I think it's like five or six hours where we're painting. But after a while, and after taking several of the classes in succession, you realize you get immersed in the painting, your stresses actually do go away and at the beginning of all of his art classes he does a meditation and i've never sat through a whole meditation before taking one of his art classes several years ago so actually one of his art classes have become a uh, um modem of my self-care that i use whenever he has them from time to time wow that is fantastic that. well that's awesome thank you so much for sharing that with us today that's no problem yes thank you very much thank you Wow, that, what a what an endorsement! <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have throngs of people signing up. Oh, what? It works for the students and the teachers, huh? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, is she still on? She's yes, still on. She's still on. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, um, the classes are generally two to three hours, so but sometimes they, they go on. Uh, I've had I let students stay sometimes. To finish their work, I don't say, "All right, that's it, get out." <laughs> and, uh, Oops. They will stay Sorry. sometimes Sorry, for that's many hours <laughs> just to see their. What happens is that people get invested in the project. They get so invested because they put so much emotional energy into it, and so as they're doing the work, it's becomes 
something very personal to them, nothing that they just want to say, oh, I did a little this and throw it away. And so uh, it's uh, good to know that she was able to use it for uh, teaching middle school, which I know from experience. I just finished uh, doing a uh, artist residency at um, Anna Julia Cooper School. Sorry. And middle school is probably the hardest. <laughs> oh, yeah, it can be. <laughs> it can be. Especially with older middle schoolers. The younger ones uh, uh, have not been jaded yet. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And so thank you so much for calling in. It's Andrea? Is that, Andrea was that right? Like Andrea. Andrea. Yes, All right. Uh, awesome. Has, has left us, but yes, yeah, thank you so it. much for calling. And um, I'm just going to take a second to do a station ID. I'm Mary Burris. This is Self Care Activist. We're on WRWK LP 93.9 FM, The Work, serving Midlothian, Powhatan, Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, and Hanover. And the universe through the power of technology. Um, and I just want to mention that support for WRWK is provided by Affordable Home Inspection. With over 15 years of experience, Jeremy Rowan, owner and master inspector of Affordable Home Inspection, offers insured and bonded home inspection, including heating systems, air conditioning units, roof condition, electrical service, and interior structural elements. Serving Richmond, Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Petersburg, Williamsburg, and Alexandria. More information at affordablehomeinspect.com. All right, so I am here with <laughs> kind of just like, like hey, it's so weird, like having you sit here going, S. Ross Brown. You can just call me Ross. I can just call you Ross. <laughs> I'm here with Ross, and uh, we're chatting about art therapy as, uh, well, therapeutic art mm -hmm. as a medium f of self care. And we just had a fantastic endorsement for Ross's classes from a caller mm -hmm. um, who teaches middle school, and she says that this has helped her tremendously with her own self care. Oh my gosh, the phone is is buzzing again. Yeah, this is exciting. Please. Thank God for Ron <laughs> answering the phone. Okay. Hey, hang on, hey, hang on one second. I gotta get you the mic up. Oh. All right, so we're just getting the phone set up and we'll be ready to chat with this. Film is on the line. I'm sorry? Film is on the line. Go ahead, Thelma. Uh, Thelma. Hi, Thelma. Yes, hello to you. I, I have a question. All right. Thank you for calling in. What's your question? What makes art a therapy rather than a skill? How does it get transferred from one thing to another? That's an excellent question. Thank you so much. Ross, I'm turning that over to you. Yes, I'll answer that. Um, the therapeutic aspect is built into the skill. The skill is knowing how to say draw a circle. You can draw a circle or you can uh, draw a line or you can color within something. That's, that's fine. That's a skill. Now what I do oftentimes is I can, if I draw a say a landscape, I can paint it very nicely and that's just a, 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 um, a, a I guess a, a evolution of that skill. But if I say paint a landscape of somewhere that, I, you know, I had an epiphany or a, 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 a strong emotional bond, that becomes uh, something uh, else altogether. Now, if you put an emotional uh, uh, codification or standard on whatever you're drawing, so if I say that's just a circle to anyone else, but to me, that represents the universe and what I put in it is extremely important and what I put outside that circle is something I I, I really am distasteful about and, and really don't like, then that becomes therapy the moment I use it. At, Can you speak up Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, that becomes therapy as a, uh, the moment that I start to use it to express either emotional states or, or spiritual states. If, most of these uh, uh, ecclesiastical paintings uh, were often therapeutic for the artists because they were expressing 
uh, a, a spiritual nature through uh, the images. And so it becomes also therapy when you use it as a tool to help others to deal with things not related to art. Okay, mm -hmm. when you use, if you give them the skill, for instance, we know how to write, you know how to write, correct? Yeah. All right, writing is fine. You can put words together and they make no sense or you can put words together and they might tell a story. But if you put words together and they form a poem and that poem is filled with the content of your emotional state and your psyche mm -hmm. and what you've seen and and you are filled with either happiness or rage or something and you put it in that a poem and you leave it on the table and you and you express it through those words that skill of just typing words knowing your alphabets and putting words mm -hmm. together has now taken on a therapeutic dimension because it has given you an avenue for emotional even physical and spiritual mm -hmm. release Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, okay, that that gives you a tool, using that skill to give you a tool for emotional, uh, mental, uh, and spiritual release mm -hmm. uh, makes it therapy, turns that art, turns that, that skill into something that is therapeutic. Thank you so much for your question, Thelma, and thanks thank you so for much listening. Thank you for response, and of I understand it better than I did. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, Thelma. <laughs> that was an awesome answer. Oh, well, good. Thank I, you. I was hoping she could hear me. I don't know if she was trying to listen through the phone or through the radio uh, yeah. at the same time, but I thank you, Thelma. Um, I should have asked if you had a follow-up question, but that's okay. I, I definitely appreciate it. Hi. <laughs> and, and I really thank you for calling in. And and you can call back if you have another question. If something, <laughs> is, something I didn't answer completely or if you had a second question. Um, but I really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, so I'm just going to take a second to ID the station. This is WRWK LP 93.9 FM, The Work. We're at thework.com. Oh, is this one blinking too? Yeah. We've got oh, one on this, this phone. Awesome. Well Busy. done. Busy day. Yeah, so uh, Ron's, Maybe this one's not Maybe it's Ron's catching a call, hopefully, right now. WRWK, 93.9 FM. When you hit it, it might have hung I think up. I, must have hung I think there. you, yeah. Well, hopefully that person will call back. So if you just called into the station, you can, should we hang this one up? It's up? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 804. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. If you just. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, we can do it together. Okay. If you just tried to call in, please call back. That was beautiful. Thank you. High five. Okay, there we go. So we have another caller in just a moment, uh, and while they are, uh, Ron is setting them up, I just want to remind you that the number is 804-464-1089. Uh, okay, uh, let me just... So, um, Ron is setting them up. Yes, she's also, this is Leah. She would like to talk to the artist. I want to mention that the micing, the mic she listens to is right here. Right there. Yeah, okay. She can't okay. hear the radio per se. Okay. Right. So, I'll come so, in closer. So you want to kind of hit two targets okay. at the same time. Okay. So, hi, Leah. Thank you so much for calling Self-Care Activists. What would you like to share with us today? Hi, um, thank you for taking my call. Um, this is really interesting information, and um, I wanted to put two questions to Ross. Um, the first one is, did art yes. therapy choose you, or did you choose it? Yes, it is one. Oh, and um, I'd like to follow next. up with asking, and how did you recharge? After sometimes it's maybe it's feeling it's drained it's by um, it's having it's to give so much of yourself in this very interesting um, yeah. deal. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and I think. Uh I'm, excuse me one second. So I'm just going to repeat the question just in case uh, the other listeners didn't quite get this. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the station at this moment. So the first question is, did art therapy choose you or did you choose it? I guess um, professionally art therapy chose me. 
by just calling me up one day and asking me if I could do this. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, I'll do this. Um, but I think I was doing it um, for a long time before I knew that I was doing it. When I, especially when I was working with inner city kids and at risk youth and helping them find ways to express themselves. As I often told my kids, I said, you know, no matter what you say, if you put it on canvas and putting on paper, if you express yourself through art, you're doing no harm to yourself or others. So just go for it, no matter what it is. And I think it was kind of uh, at the same time that it happened. Awesome. And so uh, Leah's second question is, how do you recharge after doing this important work? Um, how I recharge? Well, there's two different things. When I was at the hospital, I had to recharge in a different way because I oftentimes had to work with terminal patients and oftentimes they were children and you would get close to them, you know, even if you tried to keep it professional. And, and um, I, um, I, um, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I um, used to try to recharge by just just doing nothing really, by enjoying my surroundings, by being um, uh, still, by uh, just taking it away from me, taking the onus of the emotional import. When I work with my students in class, I'm kind of recharged after the class. It's just, I might be a little drained, but it's like when you get on a roller coaster and you get off and you say, wow, that was fun. And, and, and then you might be set to go again. But most of the time, if I can just sit back and have a good meal and read a good novel or travel, oftentimes I'll spend a month in the Caribbean and do as little as possible. And that will definitely recharge <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah, for calling in. I hope Ross answered your question. Absolutely. Thank you. And this is a great program. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have um, um, Lindley Smith. Lindley Smith, welcome to Self Care Activist. We can't hear them. One second. Oh. One second, Lindley. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm sorry. Here we go. Hello. Hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Um, everybody, this is my father, Dr. Lindley T. Smith, MD. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Dr. Smith, excuse me. Oh, I'm, hi, how are you? I'm great. I've, enjoy, I've enjoyed the show, and I just called in to find out, Ross, uh, what was the most difficult, uh, challenging situation that occurred while he was working at the hospital. That's a good question. Um, um, the question is, what is the most challenging, what was it? Say it again. Difficult situation that occurred while working at the hospital. Now, uh, it's it, that's a, also an easy question because I remember it very succinctly. And I was working with a patient named Lena, and she was terminal, and she had turned 18. And as I was finished working with her, um, she turned to me and asked me, Ross, why am I going to die? And that's a really hard question. And I, I said that, um, right here. Wait, yeah. can we turn this down as far as saying, because there's some oh, noise in the back. The, the, that's not it. The background is There's background noise on the phone. And this is like a beautiful story, so I want to. Sh Excuse me, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. Yeah, can we turn the volume down on this, on the phone? Doctor, could, doctor, could you turn off the background noise there? The radio is coming through it very oddly. Yeah, it is. Should I turn my? Uh... If you don't mind, yes. You turn that down, that'll, that'll help a lot at this end. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry to interrupt that amazing story. Yes, thank you. Um, so, so she asked me. Ross is on. 
<laughs> <laughs> so she asked me. Is that better? Yes, thank you very much. So she asked me, what, why am I going to die? And so I wasn't quite sure at first how to answer that because it was such a, a, a hard question for anyone to ask, ask especially to understand why someone with uh, someone so young with cancer. So I thought about it and I had to deal with a lot of death in my life. And I said that you aren't really going to die because you are just a vessel. If you look at this glass of water we have on the table next to you, what's the most important part of this water? And she said the liquid inside. And so I said, exactly correct. So if you have this liquid inside and you have a hole in this cup, in this vessel, what happens to the liquid? And she said that it flows out of the liquid, out of the cup, out of the vessel. And I said, then what would you do to save the, whatever the contents of that cup is? And she said, we'll get another cup. And I said, correct. We'll get another cup and we would catch the valuable contents of that cup. And I said, your body is just a vessel. You have a hole in it that cannot be repaired. And we know the truth of physics is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. And so that energy is an important part of that vessel. Your soul is what never dies. And it just needs to go to another vessel. And so your body that cup and this frame of things is going to be inconsequential. It's not who you are. You are going to live on. And she thought about that and she smiled and says, yes, I agree. This, this, this sounds like the truth to me. And, and we embraced and a few days later she was gone. Hmm. Wow. wow. That's a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Smith for calling in with that question and um, I that was just beautiful. Thank you You with us doctor There you go, thank you so much I think we can just thank you. Can yes, you hear it. us? We'll just we, can you hear us? No, we'll just hang it up. Oh, there we go. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for your call. Thanks for taking it back, Tom, but thank you very much for that call. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, we can right. hear you fine. <sighs> so cute. We can hear you fine, yeah. All right, great. We're, we're going to take it back now, but thank you very much. That's an excellent <laughs> point you brought up. And that, was, that was absolutely beautiful. And, um, and keep listening. There's just there's so much there. there. Um, Thanks again for calling. I'm just, thank you I don't so know much. what to say. So when I don't know what to say, you know what I do around here? I do a station ID. <laughs> yes, this is WRWK. This is Self Care Activist 93.9 FM, The Work FM. You can watch us on Facebook Live right now on uh, The Work FM Facebook page. And um, I'm Mary Burris. This is Self Care Activist. I'm here with S. Ross Brown. <laughs> and um, if you have a question or a comment, you can call in at 804-464-1089. That's 804-464-1089. We've had some wonderful calls today so far. And um, I just want to say that um, next week is the 4th of July. I will be taking a break. I will be celebrating the Declaration of Independence of our fair nation with family and friends. So, uh, but I will be back on July 11th from 4 to 6 p.m. with life coach Benita Condi of Create Radical Love. And we'll be discussing uh, how life coaching is an act of self-care. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ross has a lot of friends and family members apparently we're having lots of phone calls today. There you go. Um, I also want to thank the person who called okay. last, Dr. Smith, calling all the way from Martha's Vineyard. Oh. Uh, we have a, yeah. outside the local calling area. I really appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. That is awesome. Yeah, and it was delightful. His question was amazing. 
Um, so uh, Ron is in the throes of setting up this other person who is apparently they're having trouble communicating. So I just wanted to ask you my next question, which are, um, uh, <laughs> like I'm having all these questions answered already. Um, what do you think it is about the process of creating a work of art that is healing for people? Well, it's, I think it's uh, two or threefold. The first fold is definitely the physical labor of it. Um, it can be a lot more difficult than people realize, especially for a professional artist that has to stretch canvas and cut things and do a lot of physical labor. If you look at their hands, they their hands are much stronger and meatier and uglier than everybody else's hands. <laughs> but for the layperson, it can be uh physically daunting and and exhilarating in that aspect um and it uh can be intellectually challenging uh imagine trying to give um emotion and form and allegory to an abstract painting as often is in some of my abstract uh, therapeutic classes uh that would take uh, a fair bit of uh, intellectual prowess sometimes also the uh, spiritual component and emotional component to to try and link with your hand and mind your heart to something as inanimate as paint and brush and canvas and that can uh, be especially challenging but what people find out is if you don't think about it too hard it becomes easier Wow. Awesome. Now we had a missed caller. You can <laughs> call back. They called and obviously the connection was bad, but call back, please. It was intermittent, yes. <laughs> yes, 804 464 I'm Mary Burris. This is Self Care Activist. And I'm here with Ross Brown. And we're talking about therapeutic art. And Andrea Wright says, um, Andrea Wright says through Facebook Live, hello, and it's a great show. Oh, thank you, Andrea. That's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Tell all of your friends. <laughs> you go ahead and share this on social media. We would love that. Um, and <laughs> Ross has a call on his personal phone right now. Um, hopefully, he's not going to take it. No, not at all. <laughs> so, um, a while back, you were talking about um, this collective uh, healing that needs to be done amongst African Americans. Can you speak a little bit more to that and how art might be a medium for that healing? Well, yeah. Well, there's... I mean, you discussed displacement. Right. Well, what happens a lot of times is that what's so important is to know the story know our story and a lot of times we don't know our story or the full story well, yeah, the full story and right. some of it is 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 not exactly the story it is told by other people if if i were to recount a game a football game uh between my favorite team and, and another team it would be the same game and sound different coming out the mouths of somebody who was a fan of the other team mm -hmm. and so that's what happens a lot of times with uh, history. And in our culture, we oftentimes say it's his story uh, about our culture. And so when we do not have uh, the means of, of really, really telling and expressing and understanding where we come from, in any cultures throughout the world, it is extremely important that they know their cultural history. I don't care what race, religion you have, that is something that is cherished. That is something that starts wars. And we have oftentimes had to had to replace things that were sacred to us, like drums, with, say, strings and woodwinds and make jazz. Replace you know, the indigenous foods of our country uh, and turn scraps that were given to us into soul food. 
doing it so well that everybody stands in line for it now. And so um, I think it's what happens is that taking whatever craft it is, whether it is singing in, in blues becomes very therapeutic, you know, taking those, those guitars and banjos that were replacing the, the uh, uh, drums and such and shink arrays and turning that into a, a modality of self-expression that talked about heartbreak and loss, taking uh, culinary arts, uh, taking uh, a religion that was forced upon you and turning it into a different kind of spirituality, into gospel, uh, taking um, art in a way that it was so intellectual that people were saying, you know, we're, we're forbidding you from reading, but we also might you know, forgive, forbid you from certain aspects of self-expression. There are artists out there uh, that had to hide their race as they painted landscapes in order to gain any kind of traction. And Do you mean any kind of traction in the art in world? The art world mm -hmm. uh, and be able to, to keep painting. But I think that um, um, most art that is that is engaged by black people often becomes therapeutic whether it's hip-hop or you know song or painting it often becomes a mode if you look at it there's if you look at you know art that expresses uh the identity that uh we're seeking to establish you can feel the 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 passion the the the, the the release, uh, it oftentimes can be heavy, not necessarily all the time, but it oftentimes can because it is trying to speak truth to power using so many different mediums. And so that can be um, um, a therapeutic usage of that creativity. So do I hear what you're saying? This is this is happening. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's been happening. Yeah, it's been happening for for a long time. Uh, before, uh, during say Kemet and Egyptian uh, cultures and such, it was oftentimes communicative. It was communicating this story. It was saying this is what's happening here, and this is. Uh, this particular God, and then it became a little more fluid during the time of Akhenaten um, and Nefertiti. Um, but um, oftentimes, you know, especially in African art, has always been tied in with spirituality as well. But as we get into modern aspects of, of, um, of art and um, expression, we've had a little more leeway, a little more, we could we can do things in a way that is not uh, um, uh, um, I guess put into a, a, a gerrymander saying you have to uh, paint only this way, paint this type of imagery. We've had a little bit a lot of freedom when it comes to self-expression, but that still uh, holds a lot of personal therapy with the individual artists which they share. I, I want to say one thing, that as an artist, um, you are probably one of the most vulnerable people on the planet because you put your soul and your expression onto a canvas for others to judge them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that can be a very daunting thing, whether it's music or whether it's it's painting. When you say, oh, this is this is my... This is my soul and my expression right here for you to see. And someone says, ah, it's a bunch of crap. I don't like it. And you're like, wow, that's, that hurts. <laughs> you know? But you, uh, you know, it's, it's something that people have to understand that there's a lot of vulnerability that goes into looking at somebody's mode of self-expression. So those of you who were watching live on Facebook, you just saw my eyes roll. I'm not rolling my eyes because I disagree with Ross or I think what he's saying is silly. I'm rolling my eyes out of embarrassment because, of course, I was a theater critic here <laughs> in, and a critic of other, other art media here for 10 years. Uh, 
with Style Weekly. So yeah, I am that person <laughs> is looking at the artist's work and going, hmm, I don't know about this or that or the other thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a time when I walked into a theater and invoked fear. fear. <laughs> but now I walk into a theater and people go, eh. Well, luckily, eh. I've had... I only read. Oh, I don't here. even read my reviews, and I've only one I read was pretty good, so I left it at that. <laughs> that I was. Want to know. That's pretty <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah, that's wise. I'm sure, particularly if I was reviewing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. So, um, I'm Mary Burris. I'm here with Ross Brown, and we're on self care activists. We're talking about therapeutic art and its value as um, a medium of self care. And we're on WRWK 93.9 FM, The Work. You can listen, you can watch us live on Facebook on The Work FM Facebook page. Or you can stream live from the radio station website, which is theworkfm.org. And you can donate money to the station to keep this show and others going. So we've mm -hmm. had a lot of lovely compliments today on how valuable this show is. Show it with your dollars. 804-464-1089. It only takes $40 a day to keep the station going. This is very low-key over here. We're low power, but we're low-key, but we're mighty in our message. Wouldn't it be nice if the media strove to show us good ideas instead of bad ideas to get us to watch ads? Just think what a difference scheme it would be if they showed us the things that work instead of the things that don't. The, the I'm not sure I'm following you, well, Ron. The media didn't strive to keep our attention by showing us dysfunction in society and instead mm -hmm. showed us, here's Ross, wow, oh, let's follow him around, what's he doing? That's neat, as opposed to, oh my gosh, look at all the terrible things going on. Well, we are the media, and we are looking at the positive aspects. <laughs> so there you go. Or changing things. We're setting a standard. We're setting a standard. I think. We're sh we're following the Oprah model of uh, doing right. positive works here. All right. To uh, to celebrate uh, good and positive energy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ron gave me this beautiful name tag. <laughs> And I'm not sure why. Well, because uh, we, we have a guest watching. Uh, Virgil wants to learn more about the board. He's a volunteer. Hi, Virgil. Virgil's uh, sitting away. You can't see him on the camera. He just popped in. Well, I thought it would be too confusing to introduce him breaking the show. Hi, Virgil. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, Virgil retired, and he, he's plugging into the meaningful stuff going on, including the media. It's capable. That we're capable of generating here at the, the Work FM. Enough of me. I want to go back to that. That is so fabulous. All right. So, um, wow. Where were we? I don't know. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. I was so excited about Virgil showing up in mm -hmm. the station right now. Um, I'll just talk about uh, support for WRWK is provided by Affordable Home Inspection with over 15 years of experience. Jeremy Rowan, owner and master inspector of Affordable Home Inspection, offers insured and bonded home inspection, including heating systems, air conditioning units, roof condition, electrical service, and interior ah interior structural elements <laughs> serving Richmond, Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Petersburg, Williamsburg, and Alexandria. More information at affordablehomeinspect.com. Very good. Thank you. So uh, we had a caller earlier, Ross, that was, was seeing the praises of your um, art workshops. Mm -hmm. And is this something you do in your studio? Yes, it's something I do in my studio, and um, if for more information, if you go to my website and sus hit subscribe, <laughs> I send out a um, and figure out how to say that. Uh, there you uh, go. Legally, um, um, you can um, receive a. Um, newsletter that will tell you when things happen and it'll give you everywhere to go to stay connected so for more information about ross's classes um mandala classes or otherwise yeah, i do a mandala class i do an abstract expressionism class i do a portraiture class and i do a still life class wow so information is at his website which is s ross 
brown with an e dot com right that's s ross b r o w n e dot com um and uh where is your studio what's the address of your studio my studio is at 1100 hull street in the old manchester slash blackwell area of richmond the very trendy <laughs> trendy and upcoming manchester formerly blackwell part of the city so absolutely awesome so do you have a um a story of a i mean you shared the the beautiful story about uh your client that um was dying and asked you about that and and how you explained that to them it was just really beautiful do you have a, a, a another story of a transformation of a client well i've i've had a few uh another one in particular uh two actually one is a cancer patient that she uh grew up but the and she went into remission and but we stayed in contact i helped with with um you know giving her um projects to do and and such and then later on she wanted me to do a portrait of her um of the, as a boxer and um and uh, and i'm sad to say that she didn't live to see that portrait um we thought she had a little more time but i was also honored to be a uh, pallbearer at her funeral mm -hmm. way out in the country. Uh, her family wanted me to come out and they had the portrait on display at her funeral. Wow. And she was definitely a fighter. And uh, and I had been in contact with her years after um, after the um, uh, after she left the hospital and after I left the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, she was still being treated in pediatric <laughs> hematology and oncology as an adult because you know, she started as this a is, this pediatric is wrong. patient. Oh, wow. And then another one That's is fine. one of my pediatric uh, <laughs> what is your name again? Um, patients who was a pretty good drawer and pretty good artist. But after she left the hospital in full remission and I left the hospital after five years, she kept in contact. And okay, well, she was very shy, but now she's doing this expert <clears throat> level of drawings and illustration, and and I keep, you know, I keep uh, mentoring her to this day. Wow, that's that's a beautiful story. And I, I have to say, culturally, if it weren't for the hospital and her illness and my, my therapy, we probably would never have met. Never have connected, never have connected in real life. Never have, never have intertwined. I'm, sh you know, I'm sure culturally is just. You know, uh, but I'm sure each of us have learned something from each other culturally and even, you know, uh, have understanding of the myth of race. So, yeah. So we so, you know, there's a theory that everyone comes into our life for a reason. And we have a caller coming into our life right now. Ron, yeah. who's on the line? Luella's calling and she has a question for Mr. Brown. Yeah. Hi, Luella. You're Hi, Luella. Noel, I'm sorry. Hi, Noel. This is Mary. You're on Self Care Activist. Thanks for your call. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Great. Well, my question is, how would um, you know, if a person is extremely busy or you know just always on the go, how would art be more on the therapeutic side, and what kind of art for someone who just needs to wind down? All right. Good question. Excellent question. And the question was? <laughs> the question is, when if you're super busy, how uh, do you find, what was it, finding time, Noel? Find a way. Find a way to incorporate art. To wind in, down. To, to wind down, down in your well, life. I always tell people, you can, you know, there's always a time. I'm always walking around with a novel in my bag. Not because I have time to read everywhere, but there's always something, whether I'm standing in line at the grocery store or uh, getting a meal, I always find time to read a couple of pages. And so the same way with art, if you carry around, a, uh, if you're really busy and you carry around a, a, a drawing pad, just start with that. Mm. Start with a drawing pad and, and coloring pencils and markers and draw what you see. And if you're not that good, just draw 
uh, shapes and colors that that define how you're feeling. Organic shapes and and uh, cool colors oftentimes might be something that would denote uh, a, a mild view. Of, yes, and if you're and for instance, if you have a lot of um, if you have a lot of that's in her area. If you have if you have a lot of anger in you, put it on a page. I don't care if you have to scribble abruptly, uh, using colors that 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 represent that anger. Put that on the page. You can even use it as a diary. And as you flip through it, you can say, "Wow, today I was really pissed off. I don't know what was going on, but you know, I can't draw a lick. But you can tell I was mad. Look at the colors, you know, and leave it on the page. Just like when I used to play football, coach would say, "Leave it on the field." And the same way, if you have a little bit more time, get some art supplies from a reputable art store and uh, pick up some acrylic paint and some canvas, uh, watercolor paper, and just uh, use that to explore the medium, get a, 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 a facility with it first, and then, you know, add your own personal touches to it. Oftentimes it could just be a decorative. The excellent thing about a mandala is that it's really hard to get it wrong and really hard to make it ugly because <laughs> it's about balance. If you do something, you know, pretty hideous on one side, do that pretty hideous thing on the other side, and then on the other corner and on the other corner then it's not hideous anymore. It has balance. And so use that in order to find balance, not only on the page, but within yourself, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. That was such an excellent question, Noel. And I just wanted to add that I have a friend named Chicho Lorenzo, who is a fantastic muralist. He lives in Charlottesville. He's Spanish. He's like this super hot artist in Spain. And like, he lives in Charlottesville and walks around in like ripped up jeans and with a sketch pad everywhere. He's got pens and a sketch pad everywhere he goes. And you know, it's Chicho because he's sitting down, you know, in a coffee shop or wherever he is, he'll just whip out that sketch pad and start drawing and anything, you know, whatever's coming out of his head or whatever he's seeing. And he's absolutely incredible. And on another note, because I'm a yoga person, I was just uh, saying this the other day on my, uh, I do little videos on my Facebook every day. And I was just talking about how to incorporate self-care when you're really, really busy. It's this, it's the same concept. And as you know, art is an act of self-care. So this is a great idea. One thing that I do is um, I will make it a point to arrive somewhere a little early and take five minutes to meditate in my car. And this is one way I incorporate meditation throughout my whole day. Also, I'd like to point out that everybody, you know, takes a moment to have a seat on that porcelain throne every day. <laughs> <laughs> and that is oftentimes, you know, a good place to just get some people have magazines in there. No, take out a, a book sanitarily and um, sketch and draw and take your time and and just reflect because everybody has a moment that they sit down they stand in line especially if I'm in line at the bank or something or at the grocery store you know you can do something and utilize your time in a way that takes it away from the the phone takes it away from the device mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. making horns grow in the back of your head. <laughs> you, know, you can do things that bring you back to the center of yourself uh, back when a day was long. Thank you so much for your question, Noel. Thanks for calling. Noel? All right. Great. Hi. I think Noel has left Hi. us. Hello. No. I think so. I think not. But thank you. That was awesome. Um, Thanks, awesome callers today. Uh, Ada calling from Norfolk, Virginia. Wow. Okay. Okay. So um, it's, this has been awesome having all these callers. The number is 804-464-1089. Just in case you want to ask a question or make a comment or talk about how you incorporate art in your life. That's another good topic. Um, I had a question, and that is, we earlier we were talking about, uh, Ross was talking about his mandala um, workshop that he does, and he has people create mandalas um, to, uh, what, 
Why did they do that again? <laughs> They do it so we can compartmentalize. Uh, there's a, a, a reverend who was speaking about, who was it? I think it might have been Lance Watson that was speaking about uh, the different types of emotional ways we deal with emotion. And he was saying that women was spaghetti and men was waffles because women, uh, no matter what's happening, it's, it is it touches everything else it's 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 um it's all intertwined everything okay all the you know i'm gonna say that's certainly true of me yeah. i can't yeah. speak for I'm all women general, but <laughs> men oftentimes can compartmentalize in a way where they're like okay you know you might have did this but as not and what was the again. food what was the food waffles waffles <laughs> And so I it's like the syrup that. in the waffle, right? right? That goes in the different right. little compartments. Yeah. Okay, I get yeah. it. You can put things in the compartments in a waffle. Sauce to spaghetti versus <laughs> syrup on a waffle. Right. I think that's oh, the and analogy. So that's why men can be like, ah, right, we're going we're gonna to fight, and then now we're going to have a drink at the bar and watch the game because this is the game. We're going to compartmentalize. So that's different than like what that. we were fighting yeah, about. Nothing to do with this. <laughs> you know. um, it's like... Um, uh, uh, when the, with the Ralph, the dog, not the dog, the dog and the coyote, and they would check in. Good morning, Ralph. Good morning, Sam. And oh, right. They would try to kill each other during work hours, and afterwards, they're like, are we checking out? Hey, good morning, Ralph. Good morning, right, Ralph. and they'd check out, they'd yeah. shake hands yeah. or go yeah. have a beer or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's so great. What mandalas do is help everybody compartmentalize. compartmentalize in a way that's healthy. Not all compartmentalization is healthy, and but not all um uh, uh i don't know what the term would be spaghetti is intermingling <laughs> you know intermingling or or having everything affect everything else because right. it becomes uh very stressful and chaotic and it's like oftentimes trying to keep a schedule without writing anything down and so when you can can even having the 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 uh, what is it when uh, when magicians and illusion uh. of control because nobody really has <laughs> you know, when you even have the illusion of control in the universe and say okay this is what I choose to see as negative in my life and this is what it looks like and this is the color of it and this is the shape of it and this is the the word or number it represents and and I'm going to put it here and I'm going to put it in a place that it will actually make my life look aesthetically pleasing to me that I'll want to look at it and understand in the balance of the yin and yang of things that this is necessary with the good things in my life, the things that I can recognize. What, what happens is a lot of people do not focus on the positive aspects of their life. They get inundated with the negative. Mm -hmm. And life doesn't oftentimes help. I was always always amazed that they would have news channels in waiting rooms in hospitals oh yeah i'm like how or in you, the airport how like what why you don't need that meeting. right you, know? you just saw something horrible and and so uh, that's why it's good to see certain channels that just do good news and such um but uh what this does is it shows that we have these things in our life and you can choose to focus on them. And as you come to the center of your life, whatever you think is the most important, it is your choice to focus on something or even realize, have a self-realization that, wow, the first thing that I find the most important in my life, the thing that is most precious is good and, and beautiful. And I can symbolize it right here in the center of this easily uh, drawn diagram right in the mandala and that is I couldn't have begged for a more perfect segue into the question that I wanted to pose to our listeners and if we can put this up on the Facebook page in a comment section or wherever I would like our listeners to comment on Facebook or call us with the answer to what would be at the center of your mandala so um, if you were creating a mandala, as Ross has been describing the last few minutes, and we mentioned it earlier in the show as well, um, what would be the thing that is most precious to you right in this moment? 
what would be there. And some people put pizza in there. So that sounds amazing. Um, uh, I'm sure at one point my kids would have put Pokemon in, in the center of their mandala. I've had, I've had uh, Christian and Muslim and Hebrew uh, Jewish uh, uh, students in the class at the same time putting their spiritual uh, center in the mandala. And it was just really interesting to see that. But everybody was was helping each other and and it was just a beautiful peaceful you know uh an aspect and so some with kids they put something different in adults do i've put things different and um and i've done many different mandalas but oftentimes they're very archaic or or so abstract that no, what the heck is that uh, it's 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 mine <laughs> there you go so what would be at the center of your mandala, if you would like to call with the answer to that question, uh, dial 804-464-1089. That's 804-464-1089. And I'm sure at the center of the station's mandala is a request for some funds to help us keep going. So more good people. Something else. More good people to volunteer. More good people to donate money and time would be awesome, right? Awesome. So awesome. I forgot they're doing a they were doing a a a, a, a Buddhist um, exercise. So they had all those different <laughs> uh, spiritualities and oh the 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 group you were talking yeah, about they were doing a Buddhist <laughs> exercise and then they were expressing their own religion in the center of the mandala. Oh, that's totally cool. I don't know what would be what would be the center of your mandala today. <laughs> okay, Ron, what would be at the center of your mandala today? Just for today. This. This show? The meeting is so meaningful. The show that's so meaningful. Oh, right, wow. So you have a show that's meaningful. What color would that be? And what symbol would that would represent <laughs> that? Would it be headphones? Would it be the microphone? What would it be? It'd be it's smiley question. faces behind the microphones. There you go. Aww. What would you use for the background? Um. Well, since I work at the studio, I'm sorry. Oops. Uh, I would probably, I would probably put the uh, the things I know, like there's a phone number. So people, basically, to me, it's about building the conversation mm -hmm. for the community. So I would put, I would put bits of the hints of the conversation that I'm trying to get going mm -hmm. in an area. And as I, as I alluded to earlier, the idea of, mm -hmm. of having a conversation with what's good and mm -hmm. what works, not to ignore the bad, mm -hmm. but to get a balance. Yeah, and that would be the center of the universe. And a lot of times when I do my classes, I have a, 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 kind, of a kind of a thick uh, instruction aspect that shows that different shapes, colors, stars, green. Green is, a, is not only a color for, for growing things, but it's also a color for death. You know, yellow, which is uh, a color for illumination. Uh, blue and red and all these things have have specific meaning throughout history, but they can also have personal meaning to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we were speaking earlier about our favorite color being blue, co coincidentally, um, and I don't believe in coincidences. And so, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, so it's interesting what we can choose to give that something, but in different um, cultures, you know, White is worn to funerals, and other cultures, black is worn to funerals. So, it, and white is worn to weddings. Exactly. Mm, so, that's interesting when you think that, about it. And so it's um, it can be personal, but it could also be universal. And so oftentimes I have them assign certain colors just so we can break it down into simplicity. And that's how I teach regular drawing as well. So if you can look at you know that microphone and understand that it's a cone, a cylinder, and a sphere, that's it. Drawing it becomes easy. Mm. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I have no idea what would be at the center of my mandala today, because now pizza is just stuck <laughs> in my mind. Oh, trail mix. That look, that's really good trail mix, yeah. My um, center is oftentimes, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. But it's uh, I, um, usually just... Uh, the sunset at a at a tropical beach or something. Mm -hmm. I, I constantly, you that's know, that's pretty amazing. I, I keep that uh, oftentimes centermost, and that's that'd be for today. Tomorrow it could be something else. Um, uh, but um, 
oftentimes people will will put their connection with the universe or the most high and try to find a symbol for that that can be oftentimes difficult and they can say the same thing over and over again using such different imagery and that's what makes the mandala kind of infinite in its representations of an infinite person inside yourself wow absolutely and so i use a um i use a technique and uh i have a a workshop that i do that involves meditation and uh yoga asana practice practice of poses and an art project to help people like envision mm -hmm. where they you know what they want mm -hmm. something they want in their future like their dream home or their ideal job or their ideal relationship situation or just you know they maybe they're trying to get over a habit mm -hmm. uh this is is very powerful visioning is very powerful for um recovering addicts for example mm -hmm. to have a visual picture of of their life mm -hmm. without what you know without whatever drug or alcohol they're using mm -hmm. um and so we always like the mandala choose a symbol to represent the person in the center of this um the vision board that we create and i have a vision board right now and it's a symbol the, the center of it is a symbol of a person meditating yes with you know and it's blue as a matter of fact just oh. just uh, to bring up that color again and you know that it's like radiating around them and uh that's the that's the center of my my vision board so i guess it could really be the center of my mandala in, in all seriousness today well following up on, on your your question uh, could people be doing this at home right now to create their mandala and have an idea how to use this form? Obviously, it's, it's been working for thousands of years. Everybody should do this at home. You mean in terms as, as well, just a means of self-care, like expressing something? Yes, it's a way to say, well, what's my temperature today? How am I doing? Well, you can do it oh. the simplest form because mandala you know, literally means circle in Sanskrit is you can take a square piece of paper, put a circle on it, and put what you like on the inside and put what you don't like on the outside. Oh, that's okay. You can, that would be uh, the simplest form. In my class, of course, it's much more complex. Yeah. And in a way that makes them um, uh, surprised at mm -hmm. the prowess they actually possess. And I've worked with, I do a class every um, year in Barbados, a uh, uh, mandala class. Wow, Invite, have me go down. <laughs> oh, I'm signing up for that one. <laughs> we do it outside and the weather has co co uh, cooperated for the past, I think I've been doing it for the past four or five years. Um, uh, and I recently did a workshop for the Martin Agency and that was pretty interesting uh, to have people who are all creative and non-creatives come in and, mm. and produce something. Um, uh, and really, the thing is, is to when you're dealing with people who have to deal with other people so much, to mm -hmm. take the time and to deal with yourself, self-care. Yes. Self -care. Uh, yes. Uh, that's uh, when people sometimes uh, stumble a little bit and and worry about the vulnerability of it. But mm -hmm. as an artist who's vulnerable all the time, <laughs> I can tell you that you know it's 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 okay. And as Wayne Dyer uh, once said. That don't die with your music still inside you, mm -hmm. and I consider this a lot of beautiful music, you mm -hmm. know, no matter yes. what it is, whether it's a dirge or if it's an aria, to really get it out there for yourself. And if others happen to see it, I'm sure they'll like it, but for different reasons than mm -hmm. you do yourself. Yes, thank you, indeed, and thank you for giving me a snack break while you were <laughs> sure, <yes. laughs> chatting with. Gracious as possible, so you can get that food in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just took another handful of trail mix. Oh my gosh, I love public radio so much. Don't you? We're very public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just want to mention, speaking of the Martin Agency and art and um, transformation, <laughs> since I finished doing. Um, on Thursday, July 11th, on Self Care Activist, I'm going to be interviewing life coach Benita Condi of Create Radical Love, and we'll be discussing how life coaching can be an act of self care. And that's 
on this very show from 4 to 6 Thursdays uh, right here on WRWK 93.9 FM, The Work. Information at theworkfm.org and on Self Care Activist on Facebook. All right. So, again, 804 464 1089. I'm Mary Burris. This is WRWK um, LP FM 93.9. Serving the universe via the magic of technology, and I'm here with Ross Brown, and we're talking about how art, therapeutic art, yes, in particular, art, art in general, really, in general is generally therapeutic as an act of self-care. And I also want to remind listeners today that you can also donate to 93.9 The Work, and that helps keep on not only this amazing, awesome program but also Citizens' Voices on Sunday with Jay Tubb, or um, also H-E-R, Human Equal Rights with Leslie, on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So think about making a donation today, and we'd really appreciate that. All right. Woo, we are in the home stretch. It is 542. And for being such a local uh, uh, show, it's interesting, um, uh, Whenever we've had calls from everywhere, from Martha's Vineyard to actually Louisiana, too. Wow. Whoa, Louisiana. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And support for WRWK is provided by the Thrifty Quaker Thrift Store, located in Midlothian Station Shopping Center at the corner of Midlothian Turnpike and Coalfield road the thrifty quaker sells donated items to support the work of 12 varying mostly local charities each year this month's charities are smitty's cat rescue shelter and operation catnip together they are helping homeless cats get neutered and find forever homes information at thriftyquaker.com all right oh my gosh it's family day <laughs> We have another caller. It's, it's Floyd. Oh, I'm and Floyd. has a special relationship. Got my seat too. Go ahead, Floyd. Hello. Hi, Floyd. If you are listening to us on the radio, if you could turn the radio Hi. down, that would be awesome. Ross, this is Uncle Floyd. <laughs> well, Floyd, Floyd, can you, can you turn your radio down? Wait, I'll lean in. Uncle, Uncle Floyd, turn your radio down, please. Oh, okay. I. Let me step away. Uh, thank you. I'm going to step away. How about this? That's great. Thank you, Can sir. Can you hear me better now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Just very proud and also happy to see that he's sharing the information and his thoughts with the world because he has some very, very good ideas. And I'm so very proud of him. Right, thank you. Okay. Tell him I love him and I'll see him soon. All right. All right, we will. Thank, Thank you. you so much for calling Thank and Uncle support. Uncle Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Right. 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 Yeah. Uncle Floyd is uh, like one of the kindest human beings I know ever. Just a wonderful, wonderful person and a very dapper gentleman as well. And from where was he calling, Ross? That I'm not sure. Um, he could be uh, up in Martha's Vineyard too, but I think he could be calling from... Um, uh, North Carolina. Oh my gosh. That is so sweet that your family is so supportive of you. They've been calling and his dad called earlier and Ross shared a beautiful Very story. Oh. <laughs> and, um, uh, his uh, daughter, my cousin, uh, a physician in North Carolina, uh, often employs uh, therapeutic art with mm -hmm. her and herself and her daughter who does a lot of tie dye that, uh, is there very therapeutic for her, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're just such balanced people because of it. Oh, that's and, awesome! And he's uh, you know just love having conversations with him because oh, okay. of you the want to be on air with energy you? that is just so um, just calm and good, okay. well, and has always been that way ever well, since I was a kid. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Okay, hang on, I'll put you on. Do we have another caller, Ron? Yep. Yes, we have Maxine on the phone. Go ahead, Maxine. You're on. Hi, Maxine. I'm going to ask you to turn your, your uh, radio down in the background, please. Okay, I'm moving away from it. You'll have to move far away. 
Okay. <laughs> Hi, Maxine. Thank you so much for calling Self Care Activist. I'm Mary, and I'm here with Ross. What would you? Uh, what What are you calling about today? Well, Ross is my cousin. I was his mother was my first cousin, and I haven't seen him in a long time. I don't even know if he remembers me, but. I live in Florida now, and I haven't seen him, like I said, in a long time. I just wanted to say hello and just tell him how proud I am of him, of all his works and his beautiful artwork. No, that you. is amazing. Thank you, Cousin Maxine. I do remember you. Oh, very okay. Much. You, we used to hang out with Cousin Michelle a lot. I remember. Yeah, Patricia. Patricia yeah. and Karen, right? Yeah, and Patricia down in North Carolina. I mean, South, uh, South Carolina now, right? They're in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Florida. Yes, indeed. So I will be contacting you. <laughs> okay, I saw your post on the uh, on my email, so I said, "Oh, let me tune in." I just turned, tuned in late because I didn't see it until late. Thank oh. you. It's nice hearing your voice again and hear what good works you're doing. Oh, thank you. And because of you, I'm going to make a donation to the station. Oh, oh wow! Thank, thank you so much. You That's so much. welcome. Awesome. Did you hear Sunny on the station too? No, no, I, I tuned in late. I didn't oh. see it until late, so I just tuned in the last, I guess, twenty or so minutes. Oh, excellent. You know you can watch it on Facebook Live. Oh, really? The, yeah. If go, go to Facebook, go to the Work FM, and you'll see our this video feed. And after it goes off, of course, in another 20 minutes or so, it'll be, it'll be saved there. Uh, oh, because I went to the face. That's how I got it. I went to the Facebook oh, page. Okay. But it didn't, all I saw was your picture, and I saw different programs they're having coming up. Oh, but yeah, I didn't yeah, see anything that was live, so then I just went on where I could listen to the radio broadcast. Oh, you should be able to scroll way down. Um, oh, it, it, it depends, I'll try that. It, it depends on if you're on the phone or on a computer, on, on, a, on your computer, because the computer is really easy to see, but the phone is less obvious. Oh, I have it on the phone. I oh. listen to you on the phone. What is the name of the Facebook page? It, it's the Work FM. The work FM. Right, website. right. I saw that. Oh, right. She, yeah. Well, she, she found the Facebook. Okay. Yeah. She found the she found the site on Facebook. I think I had the wrong link. Oh. On the thing I sent that sent to oh. the invitation page. So she needs to know the actual Facebook page, which yeah. is it's Facebook. Just, and go to go to in the search column. Go to uh, the work work FM, and it'll come up, and you should be able to uh, log in. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Thank similar, you. It's nice talking that. with you. Take oh, care of yourself. It's Love very you. Very nice. Uh, Love you too. And I will, uh, I'll be contacting you very shortly. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, email me your number, please. Okay, I will. Take care. Thank okay. you so much for calling. Thanks for calling. And well. the donation. Looking yes. forward to that. Bye bye now. Bye. Oh, that is so sweet. Well, Ross, I hope you have a huge family and more of them would like to contribute. That's just really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That is fantastic. Because I, I, I heard the name, I'm like I don't know. And then, oh yes, I do know. Max. <laughs> it occurs to me it might not be a bad time to throw in a comment on why we call this the Work FM. Yeah, go ahead, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking to myself. Well, the Work FM is is based on the idea that in life we have things that can mean things to us, like the mandala is is an attempt to express our lives, and this is the work of our little crew and the people who decided to join us in the world. This is what we want to do, we want to say, we want to leave behind. This is not nine to five kind of work or not get a shovel kind of work. This is the work we want to create in life, the changes we want to see. And that's why we have people like Mary and Ross because, and Virgil because they have the same vision. So if you'd like to see a media focused on the work we can do in the world, well, we're about that. Thank you so much, Ron. That's awesome. And um, so when we say uh, this is community radio, building a bridge, city to county, left to right, neighbor to neighbor. So we invite you to engage, volunteer, and support. And like uh, we have mentioned, you can find us on Facebook at The Work FM and on our website, theworkfm.com. Org. Thank you so much. That was beautiful, Ron. Thank you for sharing well, that. Thanks. Beautiful is the word of the day. <laughs> I keep saying that over and over. It's a good day. Yes, it is. Um, I'm Mary Burris. This is WRWKLP 93.9 FM, The Work. And I'm here with Ross Brown. And we are, this is Self-Care Activist, by the way. Um, 
And support for WRWK is provided by Affordable Home Inspection. With over 15 years of experience, Jen, Jeremy, bleh, excuse me, I'm going to start that again. Support for WRWK is provided by Affordable Home Inspection. With over 15 years of experience, Jeremy Rowan, owner and master inspector of Affordable Home Inspection, offers insured and bonded home inspection, including heating systems, air conditioning units, roof conditions electrical service, and interior structural elements. Serving Richmond, Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Petersburg, Williamsburg, and Alexandria. More information at affordablehomeinspec.com. Wonderful. Hey, if I could do one of those one time, I'd like to sure. flex my chops. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you want to do um, this one? Oh, okay. Ooh, Go for it, Ross. Okay. Support for WRWK is provided by the Thrifty Quaker Thrift Store, located in the Midlothian Station Shopping Center at the corner of Midlothian Turnpike and Coalfield Road. The Thrifty Quaker sells donated items to support the work of 12 varying, mostly local charities each year. The month's charities are Smitty's Cat Rescue Shelter and Operation Catnip. Together, they are helping homeless cats get neutered and find forever homes. Information at thriftyquaker.com. Thank you so much, Ross. And, um, okay, full disclosure, you know, Ross is an amazing artist. I mean, I'm just going to say that personally. I think his work is incredible, and I'm so impressed with his work in therapeutic art, and that's that, that, those are not the main reasons I had him on the show. The main reason I invited him on the show today, listeners, is his voice. So there you go. Oh, and obviously his extensive family who are happy to support him in everything that he does. That's right. Absolutely. And now that we've both had our auditions for um, the big league uh, public radio stations by reading copy, um, this is Self Care Activist. And uh, Ross Brown with me, with the, the velvet voice here, is uh, we're, we've been talking about art therapy as a medium for self-care and how important it is to incorporate this in your, your activities and, and the transformation that art, uh, therapeutic art or just, just participating in artistic endeavors can elicit. So um, we are moving along and we're, we're getting close to 6 o'clock. Ross, so do you have any closing thoughts or anything that you would like to share with our listeners before we um, wrap it up? Yes. Um, I oftentimes have people say, oh, but I'm not an artist, you know, and I think that is just part of the human condition. Everybody is an artist. Everybody expresses themselves. Everybody arranges food on a plate. Everybody dresses themselves in the morning. Everybody makes sure their hair is done a particular way. Everybody arranges the furniture in their house. Everybody picks out colors for their environment. And so everybody, since the dawn of people in caves, putting their hand up and saying, I was here and I matter um, on a wall, they have the same uh, aspect in them that you do matter and you are here and you express that self in so many ways and you can you can do it as long as you can you can either uh, manipulate a a paintbrush or a pencil or anything use your toe to to move sand around you are an artist it just depends on what you put into that how much energy how much spiritual energy how much physical energy and how much more adroit that you would like to become at that particular skill. And of course, you can do more with it once you practice more. But everybody has the, uh, the aspect of being an artist, even if it's in your nascency, it's there. And I just want to invite everyone to, to do that, to don't start but, uh, your journey by negating your destination. You don't see any football team or athletic team. I keep saying football. I'm a football player. You don't see any athletic team go out there and say, all right, we, we're probably going to lose against these guys. And, you know, <laughs> let's uh, be fearful. 
no, you, you, even if the odds are against you, you have to go into it fearlessly and understand that the more you overthink it, the more complex it will become. So just, just do, just be, just produce something, make something, and even better, make something for someone else. And I think you will find that doing that is, is therapy in and of itself. I once wrote a passage in a book uh, that said, love is such a wonderful emotion that it nourishes the giver as it is given. And that's the same thing that happens with art and it will nourish yourself as you create and will also nourish those who witness it. Thank you. I really appreciate those moving words and it's absolutely true. So make art. <laughs> I, um, yeah, awesome. Make art. I just want to say art is life. Indeed. Indeed. I was telling someone, they said, oh, who's your favorite artist? And with music, it changes all the time. But with art, I was like, you know, God, the creator, the universe. I mean, every time I look at the sunset, every time I, you know, see, you know, children, every time I see the natural world and I try to take some of what inspires me from that and create something different, create something new. Um, of course, you know, that was, that's a, a cop out because it can include everybody, every artist that ever lived and everything. But um, I think it's just important to be aware of your natural world and, and, and create. Well, as a yogi, um, what I like to say to my, um, when I'm, when I'm doing a, an art project or, or this visioning board project with people, mm -hmm. I like to explain that part of it is that when we, um, if you believe in, in God or that there's some greater energy that formed the universe and you look around you, something created absolutely everything that we see, touch, feel, taste, smell here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so God is an artist, if you want to use mm. that. God is, God is an amazing artist. Mm. And so when you create art, whether it's um, cooking or you used, you know, several examples, cooking, uh, visual art, decorating, dancing, singing, um, making music, uh, a piece of theater, um, drawing in the sand with your toe, building a sandcastle, whatever it is, scribbling on a wall. Mm -hmm whatever it is, you are channeling God. You are channeling creative, creative energy. You are being, it is an act of spirituality. And so um, on that note, tying it all in with yoga and self-care, I want to thank you, Ross, for being on the show today. My pleasure. Virgil, thanks for visiting. And uh, I hope you learned some things. And um, Ron, oh, you're so awesome and amazing and I don't know what I would do without you and thank you, thank you so much for being here and taking good care of us today Mary, you inspire us to do what we do and to do it better oh thank you thank you that's that's very kind those are kind <laughs> loving caring words coming from this poor man that I abuse regularly <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I started a tradition last week of oming in and we did not ohm in today so we will ohm out but before we go i just want to mention i will be on vacation next week i'm not sure what the plan is for this hour of self-care activism but are these two hours four to six on thursdays but the following week july 11th benita condi will be joining me here she is a life coach and her business is create radical love and she'll be talking and we'll be talking about creating some radical love as an act of self-care so if you guys would join me in a closing chant of ohm i just want to close out this is mary burris thank you for listening to self-care activist are we ready inhaling for ohm Om. Off here. <laughs>
the biggest threat to the security of the United States is Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest threat that we face is the fact that we're Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. We have to confront Bye, it before it's too late. Thanks for joining us. Nuclear proliferation and climate change. Secretary uh, Catherine. Uh, China and climate change. Yes. In the first yes, presidential debate the of the 2020 election, 10 Democratic yeah. candidates sparred over issues from immigration oh, to health care to gun reform and the war in Afghanistan. Another 10 Democratic candidates will debate tonight. The debates are being held in Miami, less than an hour away from Homestead, Florida, where more than 2,000 unaccompanied migrant minors are incarcerated in a for-profit detention center run by Caliburn. President Trump's former chief of staff, General John Kelly, sits on its board. We'll air highlights from the debate and host a roundtable discussion. All that and more coming up next week because I'm not coming in on the fourth of July. Welcome to this Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Anybody? I'm Amy oh, Goodman. Yeah. Yeah. Ten okay, candidates so took the stage in Miami you know last what? night for the I'm first of a two-night Democratic primary debate. In a heated two-hour program, 2020 hopefuls were asked about health care, immigration, climate change, reproductive rights, gun control, and the economy. Yeah, on health care, Senator Elizabeth Warren and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio were the only two candidates who said they would eliminate private insurance altogether. Yes, I'm not I am a star. I'm going to tell you why. Ron is a real star. I'm studying why families go for it. This stuff is wicked good. I had no idea. Oh, my gosh. It's the cost of health care, medical bills. And that's not just for people who don't have insurance. It's for people who have insurance. Former San Antonio Mayor and Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under Obama, Julian Castro, called for the decriminalization of immigration and challenged former Congress member and fellow Texan Vetter O'Rourke over his refusal to do the same. This is Castro answering a question on what he would do as president. I would sign an executive order that would get rid of Trump's zero tolerance policy, the remain in Mexico policy, and the metering policy. This metering policy is basically what prompted Oscar and Valeria to make that risky swim across the river. They have been playing games with people who are coming to try to seek asylum at ports of entry. Oscar and Valeria went to a port of entry, and then they were denied the ability to make an asylum claim. So they got frustrated, and they tried to cross the river, and they died because of that. On the climate, Washington Governor Jay Inslee touted the fact he was the only candidate to make climate change the centerpiece of his campaign. But if somebody gave a million bucks, we are the first generation to feel the sting of climate change, and we are the last that can do something about it. Our towns are burning, our fields are flooding, Miami is inundated. Oh, we're still on. We have to understand this is a climate crisis, an emergency. Oh, and it is our last chance in the administration. Next one to do something about it.